All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, here for the zoning citation hearings uh, for uh, January 26th. Hey, that's a nice date. Uh, 2022. We have seven items on the agenda. And we have our first uh, participant. Uh, we, oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, might as well do each one at a time. All right, that's fine. Because you're not all sitting there. Right. So. Uh, we do have, it looks like, one uh, participant here, which is fantastic. Um, we don't usually get those. Uh, I believe it is Attorney Aldrich, who's representing 84 Point Street, which is the first item. And let me attempt to get Attorney Aldrich in here. Uh, Nancy, you there? I'm here. Awesome. Cool. Hey, it worked. All right. <laughs> All right. Nice. Okay, so Gary Obers. Good Thank afternoon, you. Council. As you know, Attorney Gary Obers, I'm your hearing officer. To my right is John Hayducky. He is the zoning deputy inspector. He will present what's going on, and then you can respond. Okay. Sounds good. We'll do a pretty quick presentation here. Everybody's favorite uh, chair screen. We'll go to here and 84 Point Street. Very good. Nancy, you see that? Yep, I do. Oh, perfect. All right. So the first item is the to present is the previous decision form. This was back on um, November 17th, 2021. And uh, the matter was continued to, was going to be January 5th, 2022, uh, but due to a small agenda, we decided to kick everything to the next hearing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, which is today. And uh, that was also to allow uh, for the matter to be heard by the Zoning Board of Appeals, to be heard and a decision rendered, and to allow for all possible appeals to be uh, exercised if desired. Uh, so in that number on the bottom there is just referring to the max fine that could be applied uh, if things did not go swimmingly. So the next item is the certificate of uh, special permit and from the Zoning Board of Appeals. And that was heard on December 16th, 2021. I lost the date there for a second. And the Zoning Board of Appeals granted an exception to continue the use of the uh, contractor's uh, business at 84 Point Street for 18 months. And they have a couple of uh, conditions, uh, no large equipment, um, which would create noise, uh, avoid uh, tree cutting and rock handling equipment. Uh, so basically their conditions were, you know, try not to make a ton of noise and have uh, excessive equipment there. Uh, to be honest, it's a small contractor's operation anyway, so uh, I don't think that would be a problem. Uh, and just for housekeeping, uh, this was the legal notice for um, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, decision. So that was sent uh, effective on the 24th, there were no appeals sent to the uh, ZBA or to the zoning office, so it's now officially effective. Uh, that 18 months begins on December 24th. That would bring, uh, bring us to, I believe, June 24th of 2023 is when this expires. And just so everybody is clear, hearing officer and everybody involved, uh, that is non-renewable. So once the 18 months is up, uh, the use has to cease and be removed. Uh, but until that day, uh, they can operate as is today. And last but not least, well, like I said, one last touch of housekeeping. Uh, this was the hearing notice for today. And we have a green card returned from the uh, property owner here. And just to give Peter Bondi, our constable, his uh, moment on the recording. That is Constable Bondi's service. Signed off there. 
and this is the email from attorney Aldrich saying that uh, she will be here remotely, which she is. And just as a little friendly picture of what we have at the property, in case uh, anybody at home doesn't remember, uh, 84 Point Street uh, is a multifamily house. Uh, the operations taken care in taken taking place in the rear of the property. I'll learn to talk right today at some point. Um, when I went, there was uh, a, a couple of trailers, um, and this is along the back of the property for reference. Uh, on the other side of this concrete wall is Metro North, the railroad. Um, this is what the backyard looks like. And last but not least, I'll scroll through and get a decent photo here. There's also a um, container back here. It looks like the uh, back end of a box truck, uh, which I'm assuming is used for some storage. That wasn't there uh, open when I was there, but again, I'll do it, whether it's for the business or for the residents at this point, it's uh, kind of a moot point. And that's our presentation. So my, uh, my, I guess my status update or recommendation to the hearing officer is that the Zoning Board of Appeals granted the 18 month special exception to allow the use to continue on the property under their conditions. Uh, I will keep the matter uh, in our system as a open complaint file, uh, but there's no active fines at the moment. There's no money owed to the city, uh, simply keeping it on the our records as an issue, just because if there's ever a title search or a uh, inquiry as to the use of the property, we can say the use is not permitted, but it has this special exception to be allowed for until um, 2022. And that's it. Sorry, hold on. Thank you for the summation. Um, and uh, that's thorough and uh, I just want to make sure that I understood everything that was happening and I, I do. So um, I'm good on this end. All right, we'll stop that share screen there. Oh, no, 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 she's still there. I just stopped oh. the share screen. That's all. Yep, I'm here. I guess you guys can't see me. You can just hear me. Uh, I can't see you. Yeah, I don't know why the camera's not working. I don't know. I can, I can see you, you guys, though. Oh, that might be unfortunate for you, though. Um, <laughs> is, do you have your camera on? I do. I, I mean, I think I do. I, I pushed all the buttons for that allows me to push. There's only one button that allows me to push, and it's either to mute or unmute my audio. There's no button for a video. That is very interesting. Thank you for the heads up. I will. Yeah, because uh, if I could, I would have, and I have a camera on my my computer, so I I just figured you guys don't you don't look at people, so that's fine. I mean, we do for better or for worse. We do. Special. So, is there anything else that you guys need me for? Uh, attorney, uh, you want to hear the ruling? Yeah, he'll put his ruling. Oh on. yes, yes. Now, special permit exemption. Violation to your special permit exemption in place until uh, what's the June 16th, 2023? Uh, June 24th, but same difference. <laughs> Six, it says 16. Yeah, uh, that was like that may be the DZI's error because the effective date was the 24th. So 624, 2023. I'm going to continue this to July 2023. I'm not giving you a date yet. We'll send you notice. Okay. Unless there's nothing to do with that point. Uh, okay. Just let me get the fines in here, Max. Today, Max, fine as of today is 42000 $750 of June 2023, it'll be $120,000. So what happens if you don't get this? Do we 
that fine accruing all that time? So that would be the accrual. So if the it operates and it's beyond its um, date that it has to cease, and they were like, they can't and, get continued approval to stay there. Right, correct. It's gone once it's once that uh, special exception expires, the use has to cease and be removed. Okay, so you haven't gotten out. You're facing one hundred twenty thousand dollars, so I presume you'll be out by then. And so the I, fine kicks in, just so I understand. You're facing one hundred twenty thousand dollar fine if the uh, operation that um, the operation doesn't cease by June twenty fourth, two thousand twenty three. Correct. So uh, by that day, uh, so that day will pass. I'll head out to do an inspection, uh, mm -hmm. and if everything is gone, great. Uh, if not, we'll have that discussion uh, <laughs> when it uh, when it comes. Okay. All right. That's Got it. it. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. thank you, Gary. Thank you, John. No problem. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Okay. Thanks very much. No problem. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. So we're going to take a quick, just take a quick pause here. Like, uh, I'm going to take a quick pause for a second just so that we can move on to the next matter. I get organized here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for uh, 34 Bird Avenue. That's number two on your agendas. We're following along at home. Uh, it doesn't look like there is, but uh, we press on regardless. Uh, Counselor? Uh, good afternoon, Attorney Thomas. I'm Attorney Gary Ogres. I'm your hearing officer. My right is John Hayducky, who is the Deputy Design Inspector, and also joining us is Steve Kleppen, who's the Director of Planning and Zoning. John's going to tell us what we're doing here, and then we'll see what you have to say. Very good. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right. We'll do another share screen here. All right. So, 34 Bird Avenue. Last time we were here, uh, November 17th, 2021. Uh, at that time, uh, we had a uh, violation was still founded. Uh, continued to 1-5-2022. Again, short agenda. So we uh, kicked it to here, and which is uh, 26. Uh, at the time, there is a $500 assessed fine uh, but here, the maximum fine could have been eighteen thousand one hundred and fifty. Uh, so we continued it to today's hearing to allow for um, either alterations to be done to try and rectify the issue, um, or and at the time, uh, Attorney mm -hmm. Thomas and I remind me of the issue. Uh, work without permits. It's uh, basically. Um, in addition and renovations that created an extra story per our definition. Okay. Um, so basically uh, we also continue so attorney Thomas and I can meet and try and get the best resolution possible, uh, obviously as quick as possible, but also the most realistic. Um, and just to go through real quick, my presentation here, uh, December 29th, uh, we had met, I think it was a day before on uh, the either the, uh, 28th or even the 27th, um, and this was just an outline of what was expected, and just basically, you know, we had to go over the nitty gritty of what was the violation, um, and it's a bit complex of one, um, but this was just outlined that we did meet and that we were um, on the same page of what needed to be done. So, if uh, we'll do some housekeeping real quick. Uh, this is the um, notice for today's hearing sent on the 18th. And again, we'll get Constable Bondi his time on camera here. Uh, this is his service to the uh, property in hand. And we also got a um, green card back. And plus, Attorney Thomas is here who's representing the owner. So, safe to say, notice is pretty darn good. Yes. Any objections to notice? Uh, no objections to notice. <laughs> you guys did a very <laughs> thorough job. <laughs> uh, and this is Attorney Thomas, the email saying he would be here today. That And here's some photos that I took recently, uh, just so that everybody could see what the 
property looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See what that yeah. Good. So we have uh, basically the issue was just a very brief synopsis is the property owners dug out the front portion of the uh, property. It looked very similar, if you see the house adjacent, pretty similar to that before the construction right. started. Um, you know, it may not have been on the exact same level, but it was pretty similar. So they dug out that area by digging out that area um, before any alterations were made, uh, it created a third story by our definition. Yeah. So uh, what needed to be done was a bit of backfill to create a new, uh, average grade. So it has been done. Uh, as you can tell, there's so it, the wall here has come out. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, but what has I can't even tell what may, may I get up and point to it? Would that be helpful? So, oh, okay. Then. So, um, if you can see the two different shades of color here, yeah. So, my clients did dig this out, but uh, this was like a, a the planting bed, if you will. So they, it's, after speaking to John, um, we we just built up a wall and backfilled. So now this this is great. Oh. This is great up here. Okay, great is up here now. Right. Okay, so but you still have an entrance here. That was first floor. Right, and that was where uh, that's where I was heading right, next. Right, right. Is okay. that um, we? I'll let you go. Yeah, we just need a. Uh, we do need to get a survey to uh, confirm that the. The way we take our calculations, that average grade, that the average grade did change enough to meet our standard. And basically, the result of that survey is going to do one of two things. Either it's compliant, and then Attorney Thomas will come in, we'll get the proper permitting for everything. Uh, there still may need some details on that. We got to go yeah. over everything. Or if it is, our limitation is three feet to consider not a story. If for some reason it's something like 3.8, 3.9 feet, something that you can't just add a little more in, a ZBA application may be required. But a surveyor is going to give us that. Yes, that, um, and I, okay, oh, sorry. Oh, not, and I'm done, that's where we're at. Um, the city would like to keep the $500 in place. Um, I, don't hear, I don't like the recommendation. Okay, okay. I don't want to hear the defense here. So, right. okay, <laughs> I'm really bad at defense, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Uh, so I, I was retained right around that time in November. Uh, my clients had been attempting to do this on their own for uh, seems to be like a number of years, or for a little while at least. Um, and then they somehow came to me. I, I, I was retained. I came and saw John ra rather quickly upon that time. I knew that there was the hearing going on. I did not come at that point in time because I had just seen John and he had recommended, you don't need to come because you're going to be doing these things. So we spent some, some time in this room here getting over what needs to be done. I relayed that to my clients and they acquiesced. They did do these things. It was in the middle of winter and they still were able to get some of this construction done, which was, I think I'd like to commend them for on the record. They did a great job getting that there and doing the backfill and all that. And I just got a call uh, on Monday from the uh, surveyor, Block Rock surveyors, Mike at Block Rock surveyors. Um, they went out yesterday to do the measurements. So I expect within a week to two weeks tops a draft um, survey, which he will get to me and I will get to John. John and I will talk. The expectation is it'll be right at that three foot mark. If for some reason it's not, we will address it one way or the other. As John had said, if more backfill needs to be put in to get there, to get to grade, we will do it. If for some reason it's just too far off, it's four foot, for example, we will file uh, the ZBA application and go down that road. My clients are totally on board with either way. There's no issues here. I'm involved. John and I, I think, have a good re uh, 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 relationship. And um, we, uh, I, I'll ask to waive the fine, but that's fine. That's fine. That's my job as defense here. Um, but I think since my uh, being retained, I have accelerated this uh, much faster, and I think we're weeks away from final resolution. Great. How much time do you want? Uh, I, I, a month. I mean, if you, whatever you want, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, I don't want to tell you to come back tomorrow. I've got to give you a reasonable time. Um, How many what you can do? Let's say 45 days, and hopefully it's done by then. 
And plus also by that point, if a ZBA application is required, worst case scenario, then that will be known by then. Right. And we can and you, we can probably even get the application in within that 45 days. Sure. Okay. Any other Continues, but significant some of that progress. Progress. No further point this time on the five hundred dollar assessed fine was not contingent, so that's going to remain. Uh, seems to have work to get this thing going. Fine remains. Uh, okay, continue. Let's see where we're continuing. Well, let's get the old calendar up here. Calendar up. Thanks, Bob. Hey, I'm just trying to help. I'm as helpful as I can. So I will be forthright. I don't think we have anything out past the 23rd of February. Okay. So we can establish a new date if desired. Okay, so. so Second okay. half of March. So starting with March 16th, I think I got, are we on to March 16th? I got a. It's a, there's one that we may be putting on there. It's an old one that they've been. Uh, right, I have a question before. mark and I, and I have it not down for that. You know, yeah, because if we have, if you want to make that confirmed, yeah, that's we'll so much put a, this one on there. Yeah, so we'll do uh, that. You comfortable with that, Terry Thomas? Yes. March Continue to March 16, 2022, oral notice. I'm telling you right now. Yes, please. That would be no best. further notice. Nope. This nope. is it. If something comes up, you know how to reach. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel bad. <laughs> this is the decision form. Yeah. That is the last time the decision form. This is that memo, I believe. Very good. All right, let's hit pause on that. And Gotta listen for yeah, listen to this. We're I'm back. Gary Gary I'm your hearing officer today. On my way is John Hay Duffy. He's the deputy zoning inspector. And would you please introduce yourself? Uh, Martin Vigno. And the owner at 33 Ray Lane. Okay. And you raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Mr. Thank Hay Duffy. you. Counselor, all I'll right. What John has to say then, uh, whatever you have to say. Great. So last, so you, John, I thought you'd be much. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> oh, there's no problem. Like, like, Sometimes I get that. <laughs> They're like, oh, you, you see a zoning officer, and he's like, oh, guy, he's supposed to be, you know, you know he's he's better ready to retire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that is true. He's ready I'm probably not ready to retire, to be honest with you. But um, all right. So let's go. Let's get this stuff. Let's get this nasty stuff out of the way here. Uh, so we have uh, a complaint which was forwarded to uh, to me by my chief zoning officer, Tammy, uh, also via the building department and the health department. Bill Ireland is the chief building official, and Bill Mooney is the deputy um, director of health. You annoyed everybody. Huh? Yeah, so I got everybody involved here. Uh, basically, what this was a complaint regarding a uh, recreational vehicle, a camper that possibly had power supply cords um, that were connected to the house. So that's how all these departments got involved. So, and here's that, just to show you, it's right there. And down to the photo that was also given me at the time. And there we go. 
and just to show that the health department wasn't really uh, seeing things, they do have an RV here. The health department was out. Yep, and they gave me these photos. Which Kyle is, uh, came out and he saw, you know, everything was. Sir, I'm going to ask you because you can't hear. Okay. You can't record two people talking at once, and I can't understand two people talking. At once. You will get to say everything you need to say. <laughs> so this is the you have the propane here, some connections running here, and the entry steps. So they weren't too far off with their assumption. And uh, this is just a closer view, a little slightly closer view taken on uh, the 27th of October. Gotcha. Very good. So based on that, and also the camper in of itself, uh, regardless of steps or hookups or anything like that, is within a setback. Uh, that's minor uh, detail. It just has to be moved a little bit to cure that. So that's pretty minor compared to what we do on a daily basis. Um, and so here's the owner of record. We'll do some housekeeping just for notice, to prove notice. Um, that's the owner of record via the tax, which received the north ahead, the notice of violation. And we have the green card here to show that it was delivered by the USPS and uh, signed for. There we go. Nice uh, bigger picture of that. Next, I have a uh, email response from uh, Mr. Vigno. Uh, gave me a uh, response saying that he is in receipt and uh, he is going to be writing me a letter. Next email is me responding. Saying, uh, Thank you for your response, and there's where you can find it. Let's see. And this is another um, email from Mr. Vigno saying that the letter is in route. And then here is the letter, as promised. And uh, I'll give you a second to read that if you wish. I'm just looking for notice at the moment. Do you have any objections to notice, Mr. Vigno? No, I did that. You have noticed that you were going to be here today. You are here. You don't think the notice was improper. You just happen to drop in. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to pick anything apart. I mean, I, I, I find notice. There's clear notice here. Okay. Yeah. I'll give you a chance if you're going to say that wasn't you who signed or something. No, I mean, this is not you. Somebody else is writing emails in your email. No, that's my email. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Right, now we're up to notice. So now we got notice. Now, what am I looking at here? That's the letter which uh, Mr. Vigno submitted as in his email in response to the notice. Okay. And I'm going to read this one. Absolutely. It seems to summarize all here. There we go. A lot better than what I'm saying. Okay, so now here is my uh, eloquent response to the letter. Um, I give you a brief on it because I have to read the whole kit rule. Uh, basically, suggesting to Mr. Vigno that uh, in order that you should request the hearing uh, to come in and explain what's going on. Um, I also met in the middle as I would send the citation as late as possible to minimize the fine as much as possible. And uh, so I did wait for the last day I could possibly send. And um, and just basically, you know, I did outline that occupation of a uh, trailer while uh, my connection is that we're deeming it a, I am deeming it a second habitable unit on the property uh, that 
actually municipal forced eviction of anybody in there is under the jurisdiction of the building department and the health department. The only thing we could do is deem that it is a second habitable dwelling unit and via the fines apply, you know, to say, hey, you want the fines to stop, it would have to be on, people would have to vacate. But we cannot force it physically through uh, any of our means. So we, the only thing we could do is, uh, like I said, keep fining or, um, you know, forward it to the building or health department, but in this case, health department's aware um, of the situation. And then last but not least, again, um, the trailer is within the front setback. So eventually that would be really good. Okay, Mr. Vigno, I read your letter and I understand your situation. Um, what can you do? If you're looking for more time, I'm happy to give you a reasonable amount of time. If you can tell me what you're looking, what you intend to do and how we're going to get there. I see well, we have problems finding help, but somehow we have to have, have to get this cured at some point. I mean, you know, like he's, he's got a case with DCF. Um, no, I understand your situation. Yeah, okay. I read everything you have to say. I mean, I'm sympathetic to your situation. I want to help. Okay. I'm not going to move you. Talk for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah, but uh, I want to help. But what, what I can do is I can find you, which I will not do today, and I can give you time. I just have to have some idea of what you can do, how much time you need. I can't leave it out there indefinitely. No. I I mean, to move it, to get it within the setbacks, I can't do it in my driveway. It doesn't work the 20 feet on the side. I would be in my garage. So I have to bring it all the way around and on the other side of my house, and I think it'll work there. In all likelihood, yeah. Yeah. And it'll be close to the pool or whatever. I mean, I didn't get this because I want it. <laughs> no, I understand I, your situation. That's not so that, I would say, you know, what's spring breaks, I can move it and I can try to find them a place that I can't, I don't want to build on my house anymore. I mean, I probably have a, enough room to go a little bit, but I've used up a lot of my coverage. Like, you, you know, that's all we could definitely entertain. I think you still have a little more room than you said. Why don't we do this? I'm going to give you two months. That's a lot of time to come back here and have a game plan, some progress. I see that you're working towards this. There will not be a fine at that time. Okay. Right now, there's no fine. I'm just going to learn violation. And I'm going to give you a lot of time to your situation, that. but I want to see something going forward. Right. And, uh, and I, I you'll meet with John anytime and he'll help you. And, you know, just so you're aware, like I explained to uh, Attorney Overs, is that for us, you know, we can put pressure on only by funds. Whereas I would suggest communicating heavily with the health department because they are obviously aware of this and they could take much more substantial action than we could. They could literally force an eviction. Right. So I would, in the meantime, you know, while we're game planning what we can do in the long run, mm -hmm. contact the health department to make sure that they're you know, they're not, in lack of better terms, cooking up anything to. Um, who, who, did I, who came out with Gentlemen, it? Yeah, no, I, don't, I just wanted to. Have people waiting. That's something you could do yeah. off. You can talk to each other on the phone. You can meet. Uh, so was it like, Kyle that came out from the health department? You can call Mr. Hague up again. Yeah, I know. I can't keep you sitting here figuring it out. Okay. Solving your problems. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I appreciate it. If there were no one else here, I'd sit here. But I have other cases. No, I know. I get it. All right, let's give me a two month update here. Two months out would be, so I can bring this out. So, not February 26th, but March 26th. The 30th would be the nearest. Did we just find something? On the 16th. So, when do that? That's today. Uh, I told him two months. All right, so let's, let's go out. 23rd? What, what are we looking at? Uh, 26 is exactly two months from today. Okay, so we want the 30th. The 30th would be the next one, so that'd be two months and three days. Okay, so I'm going to make that a hearing date. We can do that. We can start adding motors on that. Stuff. Okay. All right, so continue to March 26th. Okay. 
March. Now I'm giving you the date today, so we don't have to go through sending you orders. Yeah, that's possible. On your calendar, this is notice. Yeah. And it'll be three o'clock again, right? Right. Yes. Okay, I'll put it in my notes. Something changes in here from this. Something happens. But I'll be in touch with John. That's the best thing. I'll send you some email. Perfect. This way, if I can go to the health department and all that. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. And who I need to go to and try to work some of this through. Right. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, sir. You got it. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are on to item number six on the agenda for keeping score at home 10 Harris Street. Take it away, Council. I notice here. What are you going to do the whole? Uh... Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to get a notice in case. The notice is no good. I don't have to continue. I can, I can do that. I can. We can do that. If that's the path we want to uh, yeah, we find down there. We start. I think that's a good idea. Let, allow me to bring that up. Where the heck did that thing down there? Yeah. So we have here is via the, the, the tax records. So if I'm really moving around a little bit on the uh, share screen here, which I'm sure you don't mind. That's the tax form. This is the notice of violation to the tax from the tax records. This is the citation to the tax records. And this is Constable Bondi's service. And we have Wilmer here today. I think he's uh, one of the owners. Yep, one of the owners, correct. Okay, so any objection to notice, Mr. Wilmer? You were notified and you're here today, correct? Yes. <laughs> I find notice. Let's move on. Now. Sometimes I'm not here either. So I'm right. here. Let's make sure, make sure you're here. Mr. Wilmer, I'm attorney Gary Obers. I'm your hearing officer today. To my right is John A. Duffy. The Deputy Zoning Inspector for the City of Norwalk. And identify yourself, please, for the record. Sure, my name is Wilmer Melendez. Well, would you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. Perfect. We'll hear what the city has to say, then we'll hear what you have to say. This one is probably one of the more straightforward and small files that I've ever had. Let's get this. Sure, we can get that out of the way. This one is. This one we'll have to worry about later. All right, so we'll go back up to the top here. And we have November 8th, a um, email from the health department uh, saying that they conducted an inspection at 10 Harris Street, uh, illegal rooms in the cellar, uh, only two means of egress, and there's a uh, full bathroom. How many means do you need? Huh? How many means of egress do you need? That's an excellent question. Okay. I, I'm assuming three, but I don't know. It could be eight. That's a good question. Okay. Two is not enough. Apparently, two is not enough. Apparently. Okay. Um, so, ironically enough, uh, one of our inspectors was out doing other inspections about a week, about 10 days earlier, and also noticed the Well, here's let me let me backtrack just a half second, just so I can because it's going to look weird if this ever goes to our attorneys and they're going to yell at me. So let's see here. Where did I get my first email from? Here we go. So if we look on the second page, our last page of that. This was in response to the. That's it. Yep. This was in response to a phone call from the health department. They inquired about what our definitions are for work without permits, anything like that. And that's why that's all okay. a bunch of legal language in there, a bunch of regulations that to anybody that doesn't do it on a daily basis or as an attorney makes absolutely no sense. Um, so, but basically saying that, yes, we need to have. We, we can send a notice for work without permits if need be. 
So one of our inspectors that was on the 27th uh, also happened to be out and via text message, I said, would you mind going by 10 Harris Street just to see what it looks like on the outside? This is all the notice here. Let's see. There we go. So our inspector happened to be out and shot me a quick photo of the property on October 27th. Converted garage. Correct. And I can even I can also bring up Google Maps if you like as well. No, I'm just trying to understand. What makes you say it's a, you just look at this and say that's a converted garage? Yes, that's because there's no garage, there's no framing for the garage door, um, and it's covered over with siding. Um, unless it's really crafty and really, you can, unless there's a handle somewhere here that you can open that. Um, well, I said the framing for the garage door is wrong. So that, that's usually hit number one. Okay. <laughs> In fact, that's my biggest thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got a converted garage and that's what that. And then via the health department, if I go back to that first email there, that's when the health department shot me back an email saying that uh, the fire marshal and uh, the building inspector and Cindy from the health department were going to go out and conduct an inspection. Um, and they did that on the 8th of November. And that's what got us to that front page here. And I need the seller, that's gonna be, um, you know, we can get a work without permits. We can permit it, but if it doesn't meet health standards or building standard or fire standards, the road doesn't matter what we do. Um, they have to remedy it. And, so I mean, basically, that's what we're we're looking at. The garage was converted with uh, without permits. The basement, per the health department, I trust their assertion that the, it was finished. And um, this is looking. yep, good. Okay, so you what the health department found is under our area to. It is under our area just for the fact that it's it's renovation and work to a property without permit. So it may not necessarily be like in a legal unit or anything like that. It's just like if somebody finished their basement. Without so all this is without permits is the basic Correct. problem. The man has no permits, but so far, and we don't think he's going to get permits because there's only two means of egress, but that's not the issue. That's not the issue for the basement. That's not the issue. Okay. I will assert as a last uh, note, uh, if I go back to the picture real quick here for everybody at home, and just a little close up for everybody here, I'll get there eventually. There we go. So the problem lies here for the property owner is you can by right convert your garage. However, you need to supply legal parking for it. And and it does not appear there's room on the side. There is, so basically the homeowner's level two options. One so he has to provide a parking spot, whether or not he has a car. Correct. 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 I just want to understand the rules. And that may change. That may be changing, but as we sit here today, that is the rule. Um, the two options are the property owner could provide a survey, prove my assertion wrong that he doesn't have eight, that he has eight and a half feet on the side. John, does he or doesn't? Well, without a survey. I mean, you know what eight and a half feet looks like. I know. I, I'm assuming that he does not. Okay. I don't want to waste his time. I don't want to waste his time. Money 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 for his, something that can't be done. It is. I'm just saying that he okay. does have that option. Okay. And then the other option, which I believe is the more likely option, the garage would have to be reverted back to a parking space. And as I said, as for the basement, that's a different story I could we could probably permit it but it doesn't sound like it's going to get past too far past us all right so what's the next step you're looking for get the garage the parking issue resolved and let them come back and address the basement later yeah um, we could do it under the same permit um but and, and again the health department building department don't act until we give them their our approval 
So okay, they'll so deny we, it based on. So we can wait. On that. We can wait. On I just that. want to give you a chance to. We don't come across that situation too often. Okay, Mr. Melendez, tell me what you're talking about. Okay, um, I would like to know how uh, what's the distance do I need to have from that rights to a, a, a city property line? Easy, because I know it myself and I know how much that can be. It would have to pay, pay a survey or not. Well, it would be from the property line. Mm -hmm. It would be 30 feet plus another 19, so 49 altogether. And it would have to be, if you keep the garage converted, it would have to be supplied on the side. Okay. Okay. And, um, and I was, I was uh, looking on my, this is my trailer line, mm -hmm. and right next, next door. And even though it's a uh, picture of so everything, yeah. this many, this is 10, 8, Probably number six is the same thing like like mine. I mean, I see what I see with all those. So is it like you know, well, another another places with no no garage and they just have like a small parking space in the, in the front of it. Well, I, and that yeah. I'll be really honest. If we got a either a complaint from the yeah. outside or a referral from another department, I would have to enforce those as well. Okay. We have a black yeah. and white line. Is and, I have to get something if I. You can ask to turn you over. So if I had to go out and find situations like yeah. this, this that's all we would do. <laughs> that's all we'd be doing. So I'm not, I'm not, here, to, I'm not, got somebody yeah. I'm, I'm not here to complain about anyone else. Uh, if I, you know, I respect authority, I respect the law, and probably I did something wrong like I did, you know, because, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm that. from different country, not like, I'm not, the, yeah. I thought it was going to be like, uh, yeah. Good. So yeah, I just knew, you did, it made sense to you. You yeah. didn't know if that's a violation. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, and now and mention uh, mention uh, uh, a little bit about the uh, basement. The basement basically was like just like that when I moved in. And uh, I just what I did was paint, and um, I just built one wall for something. And understand that's mm -hmm. the then, fact uh, that you bought a yeah. property in violation doesn't cure the violation. So yeah, that. that you have to cure these things. Yeah. This is the first time you're in front of me. You didn't do anything purposely wrong. I'm going to give you time. You can talk to John. You guys can make a plan. Sure. And we'll figure out how to get it corrected. Sure. Uh, right now, it's not anybody's in danger. So no, nobody's yet. The, a little bit. It's not. I would definitely say this is not life. Uh, right. You know, not life safety thing. Okay. So we're going to. How much time do we need to get to hear where we're going? Well, I think if we were to. Lack of better term, maybe kick the can a month to our February hearing. We at least have a plan in place to what we're going to do because a month, uh, it, you know, I don't suggest it, but if you wanted to go the survey route, it, it takes about two, three weeks to get a survey. So once we get a survey, then we can talk about getting a permit. Um, if you don't decide to go the permit route, you're just going to, you know, reconvert the garage to parking. Come eat it. Four weeks is enough time to get our approval. You can need our approval time is about two to three weeks right now. So as long as you bring us a plan, in four weeks you'll definitely have a permit. Okay. Yeah, but if it doesn't have the right uh, oh to convertible to the right, so right. You to so you have to revert back to a garage. Yeah. And you'll get a permit in less than four weeks. Okay. So so that's why I said if we kick in a month, I think that's you comfortable with that, sir. Oh, uh, can I get a little? For a long time because I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna spend some money. And, how much time? Uh, how much time I can get? <laughs> well, we'll meet. We'll yeah. meet in the middle. I don't want to be. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be rude or anything. How about this? <laughs> we'll meet in the middle. We have three meetings that we've scheduled. Yeah. Okay. We see. have the thirtieth. That's the farthest out. How far out is that? That's about. There's about five five weeks. Four to five weeks. But is that okay? That's fine. All right. We do thirtieth of March. Yeah. 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 Got it. Okay, so and at that time, what do you want me to bring? Well, let's let's at least no talk. Yeah, let's okay. chat maybe next week in the coming days, yeah, and we'll stay in touch with John. He's your best okay. helper. Okay. Yep. And I'll you have my email. It's on the bottom of the notice. Yes. Use that. Okay. And Perfect. whatever you decide to do, if you decide to go the survey route, let me know. If you decide you're going to convert it back to a garage, let me know, and we can work from there. Sure. Perfect. Okay. 
Violations now. We're in violation. No fine at this time. Continued. What's the date? March 30th. 2322. Oral notice meeting. I'm telling you right now that's the date. And I'm sure you got another piece of paper. Um, oh, there you go. We got plenty. Plenty of paper. Any questions? No. No. Um, no. Do you have any questions? Put that in your phone next time. Yeah. Yeah. Get a chance. All right. Thank you so much. Well, Thank you very much. Well, well, let's stop this here and I will stop us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to 16 Devon Avenue, which is number seven on the agenda for those following along at home, which is nobody. Uh, counselor, take it away. Oh, you want to do the notice? We'll do the notice first. Um, we do share screen here again. Take that out. Uh, let's see, not that one. But uh, uh, yep, there we go. Okay. So let's get the notice out of the way here. I think we'll have a little fun with this one too. So here is the notice for today's hearing, which was sent via certified mail and constable uh, for today's hearing. And this is Constable Bondi's service notice. And also, I believe <laughs> the property owner is here, and he actually has the physical letters which I sent. So I think uh, I'd make the assertion, uh, Your Honor, that we are good with notice. <laughs> I find notice. Okay, very good. I got notice here. All right. Uh, this one uh, for I give you this here, just as a token for the moment. This here, uh, this is a. Let me see if I can dig up a old, if I can dig up an old presentation here. Let's see. Let's go to 2021. Hearing presentations. 8715th was it good? Yep, there we go. All right, there we go. So this is a previous. Uh, Oh, that's probably a terrible one to be honest with you because there's no pictures. Let's go back again. This is not going as well as I, I hope it would. I'll make it some smarter with this one. My guess is no, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Technical difficulties here. The deputy zoning inspector is uh, having a good uh, go over here. One, that's good. We'll do, are we here in October? Yes, we are. here we go. Oh, we have a smart, there we go. Okay, we're, we could be good here. There we go. Here's what it looks like. I don't yeah. know if that jogs any. Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, there we go. Right there. there we go. So the problem was another converting garage, as we were saying, as we had just now. And we also had, um, so the, the resolution to this was based on the floor plan of the house, you can kind of see it here. Here's a chimney and there's a yeah. bay window. If those are removed, then the driveway just has to be extended and the parking space can be provided on the side. Then a permit would be required to legalize the conversion here. And last but not least, this would have to be landscape. So we are here to now. Now we can go back to today. All right, so the reason I bring this up here, we do have a permit here. Problem is though, this was submitted by the architect and the property owner, and I have a copy of the front page here. So you see that we did get a permit and we did approve it. And I did send a email to the architect, Mr. Breeze, and the property owner, 
and this is going to sound crazy, we just need somebody to sign it and pay for it. And we could issue it. Nobody did. So how that's why we're here today. How much money? The fee is $110. You didn't pay the $110. Nobody came in and picked it up. It was ready to go. What happened? I don't know. That's a good let question. Me, let me hear what else you say. Oh, I, I'm going to probably be way nicer than I've ever been. I will give the uh, homeowner here an opportunity to sign the permit and this way sign for it and we can bring, I can bring them out front to pay for it. And then I can hand off the permit to the building department first thing in the morning. Can you pay for it today? You can pay for it today. I, because the reason I, I, for some reason, no, you know, my, don't, my computer don't not downloading uh, properly. And I just, uh, it's came today, trying to be copied today, but mm -hmm. you, you won't see it very well. Well, I got all so If you have it here, so I have it right here. Fine. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. So fine. all you have to do as you're the property owner and the applicant, you mm -hmm. have to sign twice. Uh, where it's highlighted there. Here uh, and here. Yep. Right. Uh, this is the first time. <laughs> this is the first time. I haven't sworn him in yet. <laughs> oh, I know. This, uh, this is. Well, technically, until you swear yeah. in, I guess well, I, mean, I still take care of things. Yeah. Still do it, That's yeah. you. You're the. What about that one? You're the owner. Or the applicant's you, too. You or why? Is that my name? Is that my, my yep. name? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. We're official here. Yeah. Okay. Good. We have a lot of contractors that <laughs> pull permits for property owners, and some of them. <laughs> no, you're good. I signed the rest of them. Okay, cool. I'm good with that. Okay. So, yeah, because I already. already you know. I got. Oh, I'm sorry. At the end of my presentation, well, now we have a signed permit, so we just have to pay for it. It's changed since so things have changed. Since 30, we sat down. Yeah, exactly. Since we sat down. Uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry, you got anything for the property owner? Yes, sir. I'm Gary Obrich, your zoning hearing officer today. I was just speaking with John Hidaki, the deputy zoning inspector. And would you please introduce yourself for the record? I am Darwin Limas, owner of a property at 1611 Avenue. And Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. And put your hand down. You've heard Mr. Hayducky. What do you have to say at this point? I uh, already did all the things I have to do for the permits in my house. Just get a check. Okay. Get paid for it. When right. It just have to be paid for that. Uh, we want to do it in a couple of minutes. We will do that. Uh -huh. That's a good idea. And I am still. Thinking, I, I I get that one for now. Mm -hmm. Just make sure the while the the violation fee won't coming up. I don't know if you're going to put it up on it again. And uh, but uh, I was still talking with my wife. Mm -hmm. If convert the garage again and make it a grass and a sign, the yeah. landscape and a sign, so and sell the house yeah. and buy another one. So. Either I, I believe it either, either two way way I can do it, right? And still I can do it, right? Yeah, either, yeah, either way. If you yeah. decide to put it back to a garage and uh -huh. put the grass back on the side, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Or if you decide to do this, that, yeah, exactly. as long as you follow the plans here, you're right, exactly. I just did that one just for wind time. Right. For you know what what exactly what we're gonna do with my wife. But uh Ooh, it's kind of seventy five percent. We're gonna sell the house. Okay. Uh, convert the garage and. All right. So what's the next step here tonight? So the next step would be, and this is good for you as well, is the I'm gonna would drop this off to the building department. They are gonna contact you mm -hmm. and Juan. Mm -hmm. They will, and then to continue the permitting process. At that point, you can tell them you gotta tell them what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to revert it back or you're going to do this, you have to let them know. Mm -hmm. Either way, they're going to require a permit because right. you're doing work. So exactly. you're going to require it. So at that point, you got to let them know. Okay. They'll come, I'll bring this tomorrow. You'll hear from them. Worst case, Monday. You'll okay. hear from them. Okay. And then you just got to tell them what you're going to do. Okay. I have to count here or I have to tell what you can call. They'll call you on the phone. Oh, okay. They'll cool. call you. We got your contact information. Okay. They'll, they'll call you. Gotcha. So, take that as you will. So, what are we doing next? Am I giving him time? Is he coming back? I yes, I, yeah, need, I, I need time, time because uh, the morning. How much time you need? How about this? I'll meet you in the middle because we have all those hearings I talked, I was telling you about. 
let's do, we have one scheduled for the 16th of March. I want to hear your opinion. How much time do you need? I need, I need a minimum, I need a year. Uh, Not for the next step. Just, <laughs> oh, okay. Just to see what progress you're making. Okay. I want you to be working on this project. Uh, it doesn't have to be complete, but I know. Right. Uh, so, Mr. Duck, you're suggesting hear, how much time? That's six weeks. Six I, weeks. Right. I hear I hear you say you got the next appointment the 30th of March. Will you have one Maybe. there as well? Yeah. I, it's, uh, that's pushing it, but I'll give it to you. All right. All right, there you go. Yeah. All right let's get this. Okay. Oh, you need a form here? Here you go. Here you go. And so here's what we're going to do. Violation concerns. Permitting application in the way. Today. <laughs> you pay one way or the other, and you still have to pay if you don't do it today. You told me you could. It's a thousand dollar permanent fine. It's two thousand dollar. Things are fine. I'm not going to assess that today because of my progress. So, $2,000 contingent for progress. I will determine what the progress was. So, we better be serious, okay? And then we continue to March 3rd. Three. 3022 oral notice I'm telling you right now that's the date. Make a note of it. That's what I expect to hear from you. Right. March 30th is your next meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm going to write down this so you have something there. Well, that too. Yes. And then the roll one. Yeah. And probably do that. Just get you the No, the. Notes. The memo. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will stop now. That's, that was 16 Devin S. Right there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to 4 France Street, which is number four on the agenda for those keeping score at home. Um, Nobody is here, it looks like, representing. So take it away, Counselor. Still have to give notice. Fine. Right. Well, we'll do the notice first. Fair enough. Uh, is, is that going to be a permanent? We're going to do that from here on out? Yeah, it makes more okay. sense, I think. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. It's going to be three years to figure out how to run these meetings. Yeah, no, I mean, sometimes it just takes a little while. That's all. All right. So let me get to. There we go. All right. So first things first. We'll go back to the complaint in a second. Turn that around there. So here's owner of record via uh, tax form. Alex Etimadfar is the name. Uh, here, close enough, I think. Uh, notice of violation to the owner of record. Coming up. There we go. Uh, notice of violation, uh, the card. Interesting enough, there was no signature on it, but they can't return it unless it was delivered, which is odd. So that means somebody accepted that and tore it off. So, well, that's good. I'll keep it. Go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going on that. So I have here the next sheet. This is from the, who would be, as we go through this presentation, the applicant or the architect for obtaining the permits 
And this is in reference to the four France Street zoning violation. And there. And so I'm going to skip very briefly this next one, even though the next is very important in the long run. For notice purposes, this is also from the same young lady that sent that first email. However, copied on this is Alex here. Let's start here. Where does it say the date of the hearing? Well, it's not here. We're getting there. It just shows that they got notice of the notice of violation. Okay. Because we got to we got to establish for both, okay. which uh, it was easy when the other guys were here because they were here in front of us. Right. Uh, that was we have to do a little bit more here. Okay. So, can I go down a little bit? So here's the citation to the owner of record. Oddly enough, yet again, oddly enough, yet again here, still was not signed. So it's making me wonder what the postman and stamp right, are doing in that doing? section. That's interesting. He's uh, taking a coffee break and turning it back. Yes, and it could be. That's very true. But we do have Constable Bondi did go to the property and did leave it where it resides. Okay, that's not this place. That's right. He lives at uh, Stanford, which is okay. on uh, Daniel Avenue. So that's on the land record here. Correct. Oh, okay. One seven eight. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's our notice there. All right. Well, I'll find notice here. Okay. Sounds that seems, good. That seems close to the body. Seems to be. I think he's got somebody, somebody with the trust. I think he's got, he's got a good grip on things. Yeah. What we do here. Um, all right, so let me go back up to the top real quick. And I said I'm going to try and zip through this as much as possible. Uh, so we initially got this complaint from uh, as a referral from the building department, uh, Inspector Kelly, uh, for work without permits. That's the email sent on December 15th. He attached some photos. Uh, the stop work order and the structure. It's quite the structure to be being built without permits. Um, I'm going to go to the last page there. So let's go ahead. Okay. And then this is also uh, photos we went out immediately after. Not these are these here. We got the notice. We go out immediately after and. That is up close and personal of everything that was, well, not everything. We didn't get inside it, obviously. But, um, and the violation is very simple. There were no permits. Building department has no record of permits, and neither do we. Is there a contractor? Is there a well, architect? Well, that's the that's young lady happened. that the architect or the applicant is the young lady who responded to the notice in the email, which I have right after the notice. What does she say? Uh, first, she basically. Where did that from? Oh, it's in the notes. Sorry. Sure. This was the initial response from her from the notice, which is this here that's on the screen. Who is being working on the construction phase? Okay. So we're still not looking for I need the surveyors to get their permits, is that right? Well, she she needed we needed a survey to well to, you need a, to build a new structure. You need a survey, and then you know the okay. application determines. So whether. they're they're underway doing this without that, and she's aware of it. Yes. What happened after the fifteen days? Well, after the fifteen days, well, just for continuing purposes, uh -huh. because this was pretty brazen of a uh, work without permits. We broke out a uh, tool we don't use too often 
but it is legal still under state statute and within our regulation to send an actual cease and desist. Right. This is how we, and that's actually how we used to do things before we transitioned over to a uh, very noble citation hearing laws. Right. Okay. And so basically what this also outlines is they have 10 days to fully stop work. Okay. Uh, that's, and that was actually, this was put in the mail certified, but we still haven't gotten that back yet. Um, you know, and I have no faith in it, depending on what I've seen so far here. Right. So on January 8th, we don't want to bring this up. This is the submission. There's an attachment here, right here. And attached is the survey, reduced scale. In, read up. Okay. And so, just so, let's see what we're going on about here. I did a reduced scale, obviously, but that's the survey. And here on the screen, I can zoom in real quick here. Boom. I just called everybody. Tell me where the picture is. I apologize. That was, uh, I didn't think I would hit that and that would happen. That's a notice. Let's see, that is, let's see what this is. Here we go. Okay. And this is the structure right here in question. That structure is where? Is this thing? Yeah. It's going to fit in there? Would it fit? Yes, but is the meeting setbacks? No, no, it's not. No, it That's what not. I meant by fit. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. That is definitely not within setbacks. The deck is actually over the property line. Right. So they have this is okay. just the frame, the, not the frame. This is just the foundation that you see here. So anything that's protruding off of it in any direction is over property lines. Jeez. Okay. All right, so that's the survey. And I'll just reduce back a little bit here just so we can get everything back on. Here we go. Okay. And these are the plans um, that were submitted. I mean, they're. Okay. Well, how can I get possibly get approved? You can't. Yeah, long story short, you can't. Um, Who is this person? Uh, he is somebody is, we know that. I mean, you, well, they, this is somebody the person submitting plans for something that can't be approved. Well, the person that's submitting the plans, the architect or the, the but she's new. I've never met her. The property owner and I have had several run ins in the past. Well, I understand that. But the person who's making the application, she didn't. I have not seen her come across our radar or uh, did a quick search. I think it's her first. I assume it's the property owner's responsibility, but still, what kind of person? Submits plans without even looking at the regs to see if it complies. Yeah. Well, if you change it's over the property line, <laughs> like, or on it, yeah, that's not a start right there. Yeah, all right, go ahead. What else you got? So, I, I was going through the plans here. Just um, the use on the first floor is for a garage, proposed it storage, doesn't matter, doesn't matter it doesn't at this point. Matters. Yeah, doesn't matter. Now, this is something I do also want to put out there on the record. This is also from Inspector Kelly from the building department. Mm -hmm. He went out on January 11th, which is after his initial stop work order right. and after our cease and desist. Wow, so and he confirmed they are still working. Oh so God. they're in violation of that cease and desist from us and from the building department. Uh, this is just some few of those photos that are attached to email. Uh, I sent a email back to the applicant with the owner attached, um, basically saying, look, the, this does not comply. Here's why. Um, don't have to read the diatribe that I wrote, but I was very thorough to make sure she understood mm -hmm. that this just can't happen. Um, and let me go through the rest of this. It's one thing to put a shed in. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. yeah. He actually already has a shed in violation. In violation, yeah. He, he okay, said he was well, I can understand that happening. Put a shed in, who goes, skips permits. Yeah. But yeah, 
<laughs> you're going to do the whole yeah, <laughs> structure like, on your neighbor's property. So basically, okay. right. And what to keep going is the owner, upon receiving, I guess, receiving our cease and desist or being copied on all these emails, uh, stopped into our office on uh, January. Now uh, I see why they got so many. So so long, see why that's long, so long history so quickly. Uh, the owner did stop in our office on uh, January 7th to pick up a zoning board of appeals application. Well, Was it the 7th or something? Somewhere, somewhere around there. Okay. All right. Okay, go ahead. But so we gave them the zoning out the zoning board of appeals application. They did fill out the application. Right. Um, however, by our standards, it was ex it was very lacking. Um, and he's based, they're going for a zoning board of appeals application, just basically, lack of better terms, throwing an application out there and hoping ZBA has a good day. Um, we're going to re recommend up and down, swearing up and down that we're not, this should not be approved. But there's the application. You've got a neighbor who's your encroaching again. The neighbor going to say, Well, that's the point. He claimed that he has a letter from the neighbor saying that that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of working parts to that. We would have to also see an easement because if it's encroaching as a new development, mm -hmm. Then that encroachment also creates a violation on that property for a structure within the front within a setback. Yeah. So there's a lot of working parts to even consider that a possibility. Wow. Um, I just go past all of this. Uh, last item from the building department that I want to uh, put out there is that again, our cease and desist is out there. Uh, they put two stop work orders on the property of the building department and the chief building official, Bill Ireland, went out there on Sunday. He drove by on a Sunday and they were working. They was getting his morning coffee and he noticed them on the roof. Uh, still just flat out going at it. So, um, and just for, I guess for our records, what I could uh, uh, throw out just our pictures that I have very recently, uh, and I'll go to the end for this. Just to put these on the record, just to establish it. Uh, there's there's that application. So uh, just to show you, it was by our standards woefully incomplete. Right. Um, their claim for a hardship doesn't exist. That's not for us to judge. That's ZBA to right. judge. Um, but they didn't fill out the right DBL correctly. Uh, they listed no neighbors, adjoining neighbors, which is right required. there. And then where it says sections, they didn't provide any sections. Um, they did sign it. And this was my response. It's a long response, so I'll pass right through it. All this is available in the planning and zoning office. Anybody wants to see it? Uh, this was some photos here. This is from the 13th. Um, if you wanted to be slightly entertained, there's this is looking in. Uh, you can see the structure rising over the horizon. Yeah. Um, this is, a, again, up close and personal of it. And now it goes to date on here. This was the 13th. Mm -hmm. The next photo shows building materials, even a paver. And the reason I bring this up is because this is a lot of building materials. Right. I don't, even after getting the cease and desist and the stop work order from the building department, this implies they had intent to keep working because they have all this stuff here. And they sure enough did via. via yeah, but I don't have, I got a thousand bucks here. So. Well, at the moment, just yeah, simply well, because. That's all I can do at the moment. Huh? Right. And then these are my photos uh, just showing there's the stop work order from December. Let's bring them back to the next available spot. Give them a full fine and bring them back. I, think. I would like one quick item to put on the record. Yeah, on the property already, heard this permit from Aline and signed uh, COZZ from previous zoning inspector, Mr. Bradley. Already on the property is a legally non conforming six family. Okay. This is a B zone, which only applies single family residents. Where is that on the property? That is, if we go up to the pictures here, and uh, catch, it, catch it in these pictures. I did not in these pictures. 
between the screen and the survey. A bunch of the surveys over there. Okay. Wow. Okay, but that's okay. That is okay. The only problem is this stuff. And right. we just suspect the other garage is being used illegally too for commercial purposes. For sure. Right. And the intent of this on the plans was to add another unit. Mm -hmm. He couldn't. There's no way because of the zone, and he's already got legal non-conforming status on the property for a six family, so he could not add another unit either if he wanted to. So that's why uh hey, show me these ones where I got thousands and thousands of dollars in fine to work with give me something well really bad violation and no fine money. Well right. we we could have waited until February to let yeah, it accrue a little bit. Yeah, let's but... bring them back and we can let's do everything we can do here. All right. Stop share there. Oh boy. Violation. Found. Violation continues despite not work orders. I remind myself of that. Nine thousand and fifty dollars. All right, let's get them back here and continue when you want to see them again. Uh, the next one we have scheduled, I believe, is the 23rd of February. When's the ZBA submittal deadline? The are 10th. They, or when's he on? Or when, do we know? Are they even scheduled? They are. So the next, if he gets his application to ZBI on the 10th, the next hearing is actually St. Patrick's Day, the 17th for well, ZBA. The, when's the next ZBA hearing, though? Because they've already got a, um, they've technically got the application in, even though it's incomplete. No, they missed the deadline for the next February one. Okay. I mean, just, even if we, even if we did everything as quick as we could, okay, they so still March missed is it. Still the, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so the, I think the twenty third is appropriate just to see a what kind of response they have, and then b the tenth is the submittal deadline for the ZBA. I mean, what would the fine be about by then? Two more months. Uh, that would be another five thousand. Yep. Today, let's say the twenty sixth, it'd be okay about forty seven fifty. About that. All right. Well, okay. Continue to 223. Yeah. 223, 22 meet notice. Yep. All right. Well, these ones that are years and years old, $70,000. That, 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 that's the consequence of trying to push one through is that we can only, right. the right. first one, we can only do so much anyway. Plus, so. we don't want to give him any leeway to keep the structure there for three years yeah. and then try to get. Through that process. Right. All right. All right. So we're good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our last one of the evening. We gave them uh, some time here. Uh, 43 Creeping Hemlock. That's number three on the agenda. Uh, let me give the hearing officer the previous uh, hearing form and the notes. And allow me to get the share screen up here. There we go. All right. And so for those at home, we'll take our last hearing, which was last month, December 15th. Uh, and Basically what this is, this uh, long story short, this is another health department referral for an illegal basement unit. And the, they are currently going through the eviction process. Uh, it was continued to today's hearing. The maximum potential fine was $5,700 if we found the need to uh, do that. And uh, house matter of housekeeping, here is the notice for today's hearing. The green card signed by somebody. But I think the key to notice here is going to be this from Constable Bonner. This is the owner is Lucio Salinas. And that's he's living at the because who are you evicting? He's evicting the tenant that's in the basement. 
It's got a tenant in the basement of the house. Maybe I sneak in the middle of the night. <laughs> I well, no, I think they, they created somebody created a legal apartment. Okay, so and that's the violation is that there's an illegal apartment in the basement. Okay, so and they need to evict them. If the person won't leave, they can't do the construction to, to remedy it. Could they pull a permit in the meantime? Sure, <laughs> but I will hey, we can get into that if we really want to. No, I don't care what the... So uh attorney, I'm gonna talk to Constable Bondi uh did give to an occupant at the door, did not want to open the door, but confirmed that Mr. Salinas does reside at 43 Creek. I thought he had an attorney. He, was uh, he does. Uh, but we have to send notice to the owner of record. Yeah, so, um, and what I will present as a last. That's the attorney's on the board. You can also give her notice. Well, I could, uh, I could, entertain that a little bit just to get this last page in here um this is from the owner mr salinas right. uh saying that uh, you know they they did receive the notice uh and he's basically saying that they have not finished the eviction uh they have uh a trial date set for the 27th right, so that's uh, tomorrow uh, they that was also the case that I sent you via email. Um, I didn't print out because it was extremely lengthy. Okay. Um, but it is on a docket uh, at the courts for tomorrow. Um, and as a little note, that speaking of the attorney, put this on record, she did reach out to me trying to get me to testify tomorrow. Uh -huh. Two problems. One, uh, I'm not around tomorrow during the day. And two, even if I was, any request to have a officer from the city testify in any trial, it has to be run through Corporation Council first to make sure that the officer doesn't identify the city um, negatively on the stand. So um, even if I was around, I doubt I'd be able to go. Uh, I said, once you get that permission from the health department for a future hearing, I'm more than happy to help. I've done, I've done that. I've done it before. I've mm -hmm. done the cases to help. Um, Seems like we shouldn't have it. Should have moved the hearing. Today's hearing date. Well, it was on the 24th. He said this on Monday. And I'll just be fully honest. I told you on that. Okay. <laughs> so I did tell the attorney as we were going back and forth that I would ask for a, an appropriate continuance. Yeah, what's his thing? And uh, I I would suggest I don't know what I put on the form there. Um, now, if, if this is still in, the, in a trial format and they they need my testimony for any reason whatsoever, you know, my it's got to work around my schedule. So. Uh, I don't know if you want to just kick it one month um, That's fine. or if you wanted to do that in between around March 16th at six weeks, figure by then All right. I'll have some finite solution yeah. here. <laughs> they're doing what they can do. Right. It's yeah. They're, like, like, the, the tenants are fighting it, unfortunately. So uh, their tenants right can do that. Everybody's got their rights. As far as I'm concerned, the owner's doing what he can, so what am I going to do? Right. Violation. Continues. Right. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's yeah. even the city has a hard time with it. And they're, you know, we've deemed it life safety, so it's like this shouldn't be hard. I remember one time I was sitting in court uh, just a week before Christmas, and this woman, they've been trying to evict her for a really long time. The old lady, no money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, Lawyers arguing, please, it's time to get her out. It's gone. At one point, the judge looks up at him and says, I don't want to be on the front page. I don't want to be evicting this woman just before Christmas. Come back. <laughs> Come back to January. It's a matter of continuance, Your Honor. That's very good. That's. Uh, he passes on the way through the court. Yeah. 
continued to what we say? Uh, March 16th. 3 16 22. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what we have. Oh, yeah. I got nothing left here. Yep, yeah, that's out. That's out. This. There we go. And we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Our next hearing is scheduled for February 23rd, 2022. And with that, we are off.